In this video, we're going to get our first look at momentum. Momentum is easy enough to write down. Momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity in classical mechanics. And it has units of kilograms meters per second, mass times the velocity. You'll notice that it is also a newton times a second, since a newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. To take a look at how momentum is related to forces, differentiate both sides. So I have the derivative of momentum on the left, and on the right, since mass is a constant, I have the derivative of velocity. Well, the derivative of the velocity, we remember, is the acceleration, and the mass times the acceleration is the net force. So the net force is the derivative of the momentum. Remember in kinematics where we were saying the velocity is the derivative of the position, so it's telling us how the position is changing? The force is telling you how the momentum is changing, because it is the time derivative of the momentum. Another way to say that is that forces over time change the momentum of an object. Let me give you a typical trick question that physics professors ask. You have a bowling ball of 8 kilograms and a ping pong ball of 8 grams. Both have the same momenta. With the same constant force, which would take longer to stop? And the answer is, it's exactly the same. You want to say the bowling ball because it has a larger mass and it should be harder to stop. But they have the same momentum. It is the momentum that is changing when you apply a net force. If I have an 8 kilogram bowling ball, it may have a small velocity of 1 meter per second. That means my 8 gram ping pong ball has a very large velocity of a thousand meters per second to have the same momentum. The momentum of the bowling ball, 8 times 1. Momentum of the ping pong ball, 0 0.008 times a thousand, gives the same momentum. And since the net force is changing the momentum with respect to time, if I have the same constant force for each one, it takes the same length of time to bring them to rest. I want to look at a couple other things. Here I have a change in momentum, which is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. And remember momentum are vectors, which means in one dimension, we can represent them with our one dimensional vector notation where the value is equal to the magnitude and the sign is equal to the direction. I can tell you that students really start having problems with this with momentum. So pay particular attention to your coordinate system and which way your momentum vectors are pointing. Let's take a look at this. So I have this ball, it's two kilograms, it's going at 10 meters per second, and bam, it hits this really huge ball, and it starts reflecting backwards at five meters per second. What is the change in momentum of this ball? Now before we can do anything, we have to have a coordinate system. That's how we can ascribe the direction to our vectors. So I have the coordinate system positive to the right. So the initial momentum in my one-dimensional notation has a mass of two kilograms times a positive 10 meters per second because its initial velocity is in the positive x direction, and so the momentum 20. The final momentum, however, is going in the opposite direction. So it still has a mass of two, but the velocity would be then a negative five meters per second. So the momentum would be negative 10 kilograms meters per second. Now if I want to take the difference, p final minus p initial, well, p final is negative 10, minus p initial, which is 20, and so the difference is negative 30 newton seconds or kilograms meters per second. The first time a student sees this, they want to think the difference, the change in momentum, is down by a factor of 2. It went from 10 to 5. But no, the change in momentum is large and negative because the sign changed. Another common problem, I have here two masses, four kilograms with three meters per second, six kilograms with two meters per second. What is the total momentum of this system? And a lot of people want to say 24, they want to add them together. But nope, that's the same vector problem. We first need a coordinate system. We're going to say positive x to the right, which means the momentum of one is four times a positive three, since its velocity is to the right, or a positive 12 newton seconds where for mass 2 has a mass of 6, but a velocity of negative 2 meters per second, so it's going in the negative x direction, for a negative 12 newton second momentum. And the, add, the vector sum of those two is then 0. So I highlighted a couple problems that I've seen students run into. Pay very close attention to your coordinate system and the direction of your momentum vectors, and you should be okay.